Hey guys, Gizmo from Gizmo's Game Lounge. Today is Christmas Eve, which of course marks another year of being a content creator here on YouTube. One major change is now I'm also on Vidme. Link in the description below, of course. Now, over the course of the last two years, I have learned some very important things, and I think today's video is pretty much just going to cover that. Here are the things I've learned after being on YouTube for two years. One of the first things I noticed is don't fear the jump cut. That's right, don't fear the jump cut. A lot of people have a very solid career based off using a jump cut instead of any other transition. I can't explain it, but it seems to grab people's attention and a lot of people are using it now. Branding is extremely important. The name you choose is going to carry you through for a very long time. I played World of Warcraft for 10 years straight, so it made sense that I was going to put up World of Warcraft content and Minecraft content with the occasional video game review here and there and a vlog every once in a while. That was the intent. Now with that, it made a natural sense that if I'm going to be uploading World of Warcraft content, I should use my guild name and my character name as my name and the channel name. So we got Gizmo at Below Average Gamers channel. I didn't do enough research to know that there is a very large gaming channel already on YouTube called Below Average Gamers. Trying to compete with a similar name to a channel that's already established and has a lot of views, a lot of subscribers, and they're really good at search engine optimization, you're going to lose every time. And then eventually I just had to break down and change the name. That's where Gizmo's Game Lounge comes in today. So to reiterate, do your research before you lock in on a name. Make sure you're not directly competing with someone else on their names. Another thing I've noticed on YouTube is that audio is more important than video. I know it sounds crazy, I know, but it's the simple truth. People will let you get away with a 360, a 480, or a 720 picture. Not everybody's using 4K yet. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't have the capability to do 4K or even 1080i at this point. So standard definition or mid-grade high definition video is still fine. But the audio has to be good. It has to be crisp and it has to be clear. This is something, like I said, I still struggle with today, but I'm slowly getting better. But just remember, people will immediately click away if your audio is terrible. So invest in a good mic first and a good camera second. Another thing to notice is proper lighting is very important. What you see right now is just my basic bedroom lights that are on right now. And you'll notice it's a little grainier because there's not enough light penetrating into the sensor of the camera and the color's a little bit off versus when you look at this. This is much more even lighting and all I've got right now, I don't have a professional setup still because I'm still building my equipment as I go. I'm using some can lights with some soft bulbs in them to evenly light the room. The biggest part is I'm lighting my background and then I'm also lighting myself. This is done separately. Be prepared to edit more than you film. A typical video of mine takes somewhere between 20 minutes to an hour to record. Now on the flip side of that, it may take me four hours to five hours to edit, process it, go back through and make sure the audio's synced in with the lips and everything else. It's a time-staking process, and sometimes you get really lucky and everything flows together. Other times, it just seems like you can't do anything right. Don't expect a million views on your first video. I've been doing this for two years now, and something that I've really come to appreciate is a video I was watching by B00100. He was a Minecraft player for a very long time, and he still has a very successful Minecraft Let's Play. He once said, and I'm paraphrasing, that he went six months without a single view on his channel. The importance to that was he knew that one day he would grow and he would make an audience and people would go back to the older content and watch it. So even though he knew he was 
playing out to an audience of zero at the time, he acted as if he had a larger audience already. And the last thing I'll leave you with is capitalize on the time that you have while your viewership is small and your sub count is small because you are not your subs. You are not the equivalent of your sub number. The greatest part about having a small sub count and a small viewership count is you are absolutely free to do whatever you want completely and utterly free. Now let me reiterate on this. Of course, any channel can make any video they want. But if all you've ever done is drama videos and you decide to be a Let's Player, a small percentage of your fan base will watch a Let's Play from a drama channel. But a lot of the guys are just there to see a drama channel. And it's the flip of that. If you're a Let's Player and you decide that all you want to do now is YouTube drama, or you want to just do pranks, a lot of your viewership is going to go away. Use the time that you have while your viewership is small. If you want to try doing karaoke videos for a little while, do 5-10 karaoke videos. Who cares? If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. At least you tried it, and hey, you never know, it might pick up. Do some drawing tutorials. Do whatever you want to, and that's the beauty of having a small number and a small viewer base and eventually something will hit and you'll find that one thing that you really like to do. The most important thing you can do if you listen to nothing else is just try. Guys thanks for two years and Merry Christmas and here's to two more.